Welcome to the second day. So it's extremely bad taste for an organizer to speak at a conference. And this is why uh, I will actually not speak uh, so much about my own work. I will just give a review of some of Hubert's work to, uh, to try to complete uh, the talk of Jean-Bernard Hubert that took uh, place yesterday. So with uh, so Zuber, you noticed he cited Joyce, and this is why now we read Joyce. And uh, the artist comes of age. That's a secret reference to one of John Cardy's papers that was called CFT comes of age. Uh, so this talk is going to be about uh, Hubert since the year 2000, or rather in the third millenary, that is to say, starting on the 1st of January 2001. Okay, uh, so uh, let me give you an overview. Uh, we took them from the other microphone. Uh, so, okay, so since the year 2000, Hubert has published 130 research papers. He moved back to France around 2003. I'm actually a little bit unsure about the exact date. And uh, in the third millenary, Hubert has had a number of PhD students, which is truly impressive. So Francesco Ciano, Andrei Kutuza, Yassine Iglev, who spoke yesterday, Constantin Kandu, who is now working in high finance, Jérôme Dubai, who is here, Roberto Bandesan, uh, who is working at Qualcomm, uh, Romain Vasseur, who is, uh, will talk here, Eric Vernier, who will talk, Romain Couvreur, who was invited but unfortunately couldn't make it, but who is now a postdoc in, in Belgium, Etienne Granet, who is here, and Neil Robertson, who is now doing quantum computers for IBM. And there is more, Linia Grant Samuelson, who is uh, here, uh, Dimitri Sterniak, who is also here. And add to all of this many postdocs uh, financed over a certain number of grants. So uh, here's a group picture that was taken in 2013. Uh, so you see from left to right, uh, yeah, who do you see actually? Uh, oh, Eric, uh, Eric, but you, you have changed so much. Raoul, uh, who was not really uh, one of Hubert's students, uh, Romain Vasseur, the two of us, uh, Jérôme Dubai, Jacopo Vitti, a postdoc, uh, and then that uh, Hiroiko Shimada and Yasin Iklev. Uh, and you see a similar picture from 2019 from Romain Couvreur's thesis defense. So that's Thiago, that's uh, Yifei, me, uh, Romain, Neil, the quantum computer guy, uh, Jonathan Beltet, Hubert, and Etienne Granet. So that's more or less the panorama. So now let's uh, make a, uh, a jump back in history. And so just to, to get you in the right mood, 2001, that was the year when Wikipedia was launched. Uh, Mac OS X started, Windows XP, iPod, Xbox, the first Harry Potter movie, uh, Crazy guys uh, destroyed the fantastic Bamiyan uh, Buddhas in Afghanistan. And uh, there was, of course, uh, the September 11 attacks and uh, the war in Afghanistan. And clearly, these guys, they wanted to make a big impact. Uh, they wanted to do something big. And Hubert also wanted to do something big, but he had a much more constructive approach. And he wrote a paper with Nick Reed that's called Exact Spectra of Conformal Supersymmetric Nonlinear Sigma Models in Two Dimensions. And uh, this is about uh, studying nonlinear sigma models with supermanifold target spaces. And there are two uh, target spaces of interest. So there's this uh, U business and the OSP business. And uh, you have bosonic and fermionic degrees of freedom in both of them. And they sort of parameterized some norm one constraint. And uh, there's a Lagrangian version of this where you, you, you write a kinetic and a topological theta term. And then there's a phase transition. And this phase transition is second order when uh, 
the number of effective copies, uh, that is to say the difference between bosons and fermions is less than or equal to two, and the n that will permit you to sort of see higher and higher versions of, of that transition with more observables. And uh, in this paper, they obtained the exact spectra with multiplicities of such models studying their lattice regularization. And those lattice regularizations, they are loop models for the Q-state POTS model and the O of n vector model. And, and, and there is this thing going on between bosons and fermionic loops where uh, the effective weight of a loop is the difference between the number of bosons and the number of fermions. And the paper builds a lot on, on something that uh, Joubert mentioned yesterday, Coulomb gas methods. Uh, and as a bonus, there is a very nice number theoretical expression for the multiplicities of, of, on a torus, which is uh, neat. Okay. Um, so Hubert went on to study then the integrability of supersymmetric spin chains. Uh, there was a first paper in 2000 uh, in which he wrote beta equations for SL n slash k models. Uh, and he found out that with the supersymmetry, th those models are not even relativistic. So uh, the, the paper was a little bit uh, sort of seeing into the future, but maybe not quite getting everything yet. Uh, Hubert suggested various things in the conclusion, maybe to look at Q deformations or alternating representations. The last idea was very good. Um, and then came this paper with Birgit uh, W. Fritz Kaufmann, who is now stripped down to Kaufmann, I think, um, in which uh, they looked at OSP models of, of gros and supersphere type, uh, in which the, S the scattering matrix has, has these three terms compatible with ON symmetry. And there's an underlying biermann wenzel algebra. Uh, which they treat by providing supersymmetric generators for these uh, three uh, uh, E, P, and I identity uh, permutation and temporally leap uh, generator. Um, and they find that uh, in the graded case, the S matrix is not unitary. So non-unitarity, that's something that really entered Hubert's life, I guess, maybe from this point on. And it's also on that theme that he, he, he got many of, of his grants studying non-unitary uh, field theories. So in this paper, they managed to, to write and analyze the TBA equations for this uh, set of models. And um, there was a little sort of spin-off, maybe, of, of, of this effort, uh, which was actually my first paper with Hubert and, and with Nick Reed, uh, in which uh, we consider a loop model in which uh, the loops can intersect. Uh, so that corresponds very precisely to this, to this scattering matrix, actually, those, those processes. And, and we find that the ON model can have a Goldstone broken symmetry phase when uh, the loop weight is less than two, which is different from the low temperature phase without crossings. So as you know, uh, if you take a polymer model, a dilute polymers, if you add a little bit of self-intersections to those polymers, that's actually an irrelevant perturbation. But in the low temperature phase, uh, something uh, nicer or something more interesting happens uh, in which you go to this Goldstone broken symmetry phase. And in that phase, it's found that an infinity of critical exponents is zero. Uh, that's weird, really. I mean, that was at least weird at, at, at the time. And the question is, what is going on? And uh, you should imagine now that you best start thinking about this, and uh, you maybe, well, already now see that uh, he comes to some kind of conclusion in this paper with Fabian and Holger Fram, in which they study uh, a 3 3 bar uh, spin chain. Uh, one of the questions seemed to be if the integrable 3 3 bar chain was in the same universality cl class as a chain that describes the spin quantum Hall effect. And they find that, uh, no, it rather behaves as an SU2 slash 1 level 1 Vesumino model. And um, then comes something that, that is compatible with this infinity of critical exponents found to be zero in the other model, which is that suppose that the critical exponents form a continuous spectrum 
then uh, the lattice uh, data will, will uh, look like this. So you, you, you trace your critical exponents as a function of 1 over log of the size, and you see that they all converge to some number here. It's a quarter. So it means that there's a continuum of critical exponents starting at 1 quarter. So in this paper, they also found some bewildering things like arbitrarily large conformal weights, and they, there was some discussion about non-normalizable states, which will play a role a little later. Um, so still on this same theme, there was a paper with Volker uh, on the SU2-1 Vesfumino model, uh, in which they, they construct this, this model, the state-based the partition function, so it's much in the continuum here, uh, drawing on the representation theory of SU2-1. So actually here in this paper, Hubert confesses to actually have learned some thing from somebody else. I think it was from Germoni who, who taught him a bit of the representation theory of, of, of this model in a crash course or something. Uh, and it also builds on, on earlier work of the same two authors for GL11. And um, there is this keyword coming in here, reducible yet in decomposable. Uh, so representations that, that play a key role in logarithmic CFT. And so in this paper, they resolved several paradoxes that, was, that were found in the study of this 3-3 bar chain. And in particular, they find that the CFT is going to involve a uh, non-compact boson of a radius r that, that scales like square root of log L, where L is the size of the spin chain. So, so that means that you effectually you, you, you evolve towards some non-compact target space, which is very much uh, different from what you see in the good old Coulomb gas days, where your boson is just compactified on a circle with some given compactification radius. And this is responsible for, for, for this, uh, well, one, one element that's responsible for this uh, continuous of critical exponents. <coughs> so uh, let's take a marker here in the year 2006. So that was when Twitter was uh, introduced, when the WikiLeaks happened, and also uh, Nintendo Wii. Uh, I don't know if you have one, you bear. You Maybe you can still buy one. Uh, people were also sequencing the human, uh, the human genome. Saddam Hussein was sentenced and hanged. And uh, the Cassini-Huygens uh, discovered water geysers on Satan's uh, satellite Enceladus, uh, which you see on the left picture here. And um, Hubert clearly wanted to find something esoterical also. And uh, that's why. Uh, he uh, and I started studying non-compact continuum limits in statistical physics uh, that kicked off by a study, a case study of the antiferromagnetic transition for a square lattice Potts model. So that sounds like something, I mean, I'm not quite sure why you would want to do that, except that this model happens to have a non-compact continuum limit. So it has a non-local definition uh, like this in terms of, of FK clusters, which has been already explained yesterday for generic values of Q. And there's a cornucopia of different representations that you can make, spins, clusters, height models, vertex models. All of those have slightly different features. Uh, and you have to come to grips with all of this. And in the continuum limit, it turns out that it becomes two bosons of which one is non-compact. And that uh, was the entry point of, of, of Yassi Niklev, uh, who, who started making a thesis with us, and, and uh, who wrote this beautiful paper, a staggered six vertex model with a non-compact continuum limit, in which uh, this uh, staggered uh, six vertex model, the one that corresponds to the antiferromagnetic parts model, was mapped to a homogeneous 38 vertex model that was studied with all the artillery uh, possible. And uh, there was a study of the numerical beta equations. A special OSP22 point was found. You see Bear Yoris always has the, this, the knack of connecting things. And, and, and there is a non-compact continuum limit 
in which the exponent gaps are found to scale with 1 over log L squared, where L is the size of the chain. And that was followed up by uh, later papers. So here's one from 2012, uh, in which um, uh, Yassine managed uh, with the two of us to, to make an interesting connection. Uh, so it turns out that this integrable spin chain in the continuum limit has something to do with a model of string theory, which is the SL2R over U1 black hole sigma model first introduced by, by Ed Witten. Um, and uh, this was carried out by a, a wiener hopf analysis of the beta equations. Uh, the non-compact limit is retrieved, and, and uh, the technique gives access to the density of states of this model with uh, agreement with uh, expressions found using string theory methods. And uh, there was a subsequent improvement using nonlinear integral equations by Itlev and Konstantin Kandu, the guy who is now doing finance, I guess. And uh, this whole scenario has been confirmed by an extensive series of works uh, in 2021 by Bajanov, Kutuzov, Koval, and Lukyanov, up to a subtle detail in which uh, they, uh, they correct one of our statements. It has something to do with the signature. Uh, Euclidean versus Laurentian. Um, so more models uh, were found having non-compact continuum limits. So with Eric Vernier, we studied a model of polymer collapse, which was found to have the same continuum limit as this black hole sigma model. And also uh, with uh, Neil and uh, Mikhail Pavelkiewicz, uh, uh, we studied integrable boundary conditions in, in, in the AF pot model. Uh, so the challenge was to find boundary conditions which were compatible with this non-compact continuum limit. And uh, the work keeps going on. So now it's about the SL2C non-compact spin chain, a work with, with uh, Etienne. At that time, uh, Roughly at that time, uh, with Hubert, we started having some projects about writing a book, <laughs> uh, which never happened, really. The first chapter was written, actually. There was a plan of writing 20 chapters, the detailed plan. And the first chapter was written out at, at 60 pages. So 60 times 20, that's an awful lot. Uh, when we arrived at thinking about the second or third chapter, uh, so loop models happen to be a part of that book. Um, we sort of realized that one doesn't know so much about boundary conditions in loop models. And so the book was abandoned and instead came out this paper uh, uh, about conformal boundary loop models in which it's found that if you modify the weight of loops that touch the boundary, you can get a continuous family of conformal boundary conditions rather unlike uh, the usual bijection uh, between bulk fields and conformally, conformal boundary conditions in rational CFT. And it nicely relates, of course, as always, to earlier work by Hubert. Uh, so the blob algebra made with Paul Martin. Um, and it gives nice geometrical applications. So this is where Jérôme Dubai enters the game. He made those pictures here. Uh, so that was studying a two-boundary loop model. Uh, uh, well, there was one work studying a two-boundary loop model, and there was another piece of work studying uh, spin interfaces in the POTS model. And you can see on those two pictures here that um, there's an interface between uh, red and blue on, uh, on one of the slides. Uh, and on the other slide, well, I mean, hmm, it was supposed to. I, maybe I didn't take the right pictures. I'm a little bit uneasy here. The, in any case, the story is that if you take an interface between two unlike colors, then the interface can be very thin. It's just one lattice spacing. And if you take them between two like colors, the interface has to be thicker. So that's what we call a thick domain wall. And, and the pictures were supposed to, to show one of each. Now I'm slightly confused. Um, so that brings me to the year 2007. 
Uh, so in 2007, uh, this stuff was introduced, iPhone, iPhone 1. No? Uh, it sells for a fortune now. Uh, Windows Vista, Tumblr, uh, and uh, there were some unfortunate shootings in the US. Bulgaria and Romania joined the European Union, and something was moving at very high speed. Uh, they were not nuclear submarines, but they were French TGV uh, trains that ran at a record-breaking 574.8 kilometers per hour. Uh, and just in front of that train, if you looked carefully, you could see somebody who was running faster and guess who that was. Well, that was Hubert, uh, which brings me to James Bond. Uh, so James Bond wants to have his vodka martini shaken, not stirred. And Hubert wants to have his physics reducible, yet in decomposable. So when Hubert goes to a bar, this is sort of his catchphrase. And um, he wrote a very important paper, again, with Nick Reed, Associative Algebraic Approach to Logarithmic Conformal Field Theories, <coughs> in which <coughs> they laid the foundation for studying logarithmic CFT starting from lattice models. Uh, so they studied the enlarged symmetries and non-semi-simple associative algebras in, in lattice models. Uh, in particular, via a case study of, of the XXZ spin chain with open or free boundary conditions. So this is important because eventually one wants to do periodic, but this was the beginning. And two cases were studied, dense polymers with central charge minus two and percolation clusters with c equals to zero. And, and they established this picture about a bimodule structure. So there is the loops are, strictly speaking, governed by the temporal Lieb algebra, so that's the geometrical side of it. But then the commutant of temporal Lieb is the quantum group UQSL2, uh, and you need to, to, to study both of the representations of both simultaneously to see the full picture. And, uh, and in that way, they are able, from the lattice model, to derive the submodel structures of indecomposable by Virasoro representations. Uh, there was a companion paper to this. Uh, and so much work from that on was, was spent giving flesh to this set of ideas. So let me be a bit more sketchy here. So with Jérôme Dubai, uh, the idea came up that maybe these, uh, this decomposability, which is characterized by certain parameters called B, could be measured directly in the lattice model. So the idea is that the indecomposable structures happen already in the lattice model. And so uh, there are some difficult questions about how to normalize everything, and, and, and Jérôme figured it all out. And then uh, Romain Vasseur came in and, and made a systematic derivation of such parameters in many theories, that is to say, chiral theories. Uh, and uh, the work then went on to study bulk percolation, uh, uh, in an approach that doesn't really take a, into account all the symmetries, but which can still uh, do enough so that you can see in decomposability. And it applies also to higher dimension, which is uh, interesting and which has had a little bit of impact in, in, in on the conformal bootstrap community. And these indecomposability parameters uh, predicted also for higher dimensions have subsequently been measured in percolation in three, four, and five dimensions. And uh, this set of ideas goes on up to the present day. Uh, so in a recent paper with Linia, Lawrence Liu, and, and Ji Fei, uh, rank two Jordan cells were found in the Q-state parts model for any Q, and, and, and those actually do not really appear uh, directly in the lattice model, but they, they build up when you go to the continuum limit. So that's a new feature that, that needs to be taken into account. So that takes me to 2013 and another line of, of research. So in 2013, people were doing cloning, uh, obtaining human embryonic stem cells. Uh, Edward Snowden was disclosing many things. And uh, in Ukraine, there were the Euromaidan pro-EU demonstrations. Uh, they wanted to mark a point, and maybe Hubert also wanted, uh, I forgot what the catch line would be now, 
Oh, bulk log CFTs, of course, yes. Yeah, so, um, so supersymmetric spin chains uh, can give rise to logarithmic CFTs in the bulk also. And so there were several studies here. Uh, so as that came into the game, uh, the first paper is about the GL11 spin chain, the one that has central charge minus two and which is related to spanning trees and things like that on the lattice. And uh, they find out, well, the, they, they build on the fact that the temporal Lieb algebra here in the periodic case is replaced by a bigger Jones temporal Lieb algebra. And then by, by quantum Schwab duality, the UQSL2 has to be replaced by something smaller, which they call UQ odd SL2. And they analyze the spin chain as a bimodule over those two representations. And they managed to identify the, the Jones Temple Lieb elements that are precursors of, of the LN generators of the Virasora algebra uh, uh, and L bar. And two years later, there was another paper. I will not treat it in much detail, but that was about the periodic alternating SL2-1 spin chain, which we have already seen it a number of times. And, and, and the idea is to build again on representation theory uh, to find out what's going on in the continuum limit. Uh, and they predict the full structure of, of the vacuum module. Uh, there's more news on that, uh, actually quite a quite recent paper uh, of, of <coughs> Yves and Dubert. And they find uh, that there's a possibility of having Jordan cells of arbitrarily high rank. So things are really complicated. And uh, well, you realize likes these, these, these arrows now. Uh, so, okay, so if you know those arrows, you, you can see what I mean. So it's all about quotient, submodule structures, the algebra acts in certain directions. And there are all these, the, these representations that are being glued together. There are logarithms every th time things are glued. and. And it's really, really, really sort of really complicated. Um, OK. Um, so I'm doing fine on time. Um, so correlation functions in loop models. I will start now being uh, more sketchy, because much of the more recent stuff will actually be covered by, by other talks. So there is no reason that I, 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 I preempt too much on it. So uh, Yassine told a bit about this yesterday. So in 2016, uh, we wrote a paper about three-point functions of so-called electric operators in loop models. So those are operators that modify the weight of a loop that, that goes around a, a certain insertion point. And it found uh, that uh, the three-point structure constant uh, of, um, of such a an operator is linked to the DOZZ, that is to say, Dawn Otto twice as a of structure constant for uh, C less than one Uville theory. So uh, that's the, the, the impressive formula with all the upsilon functions in it. Um, and uh, a little later, uh, 2018, 2019, we started studying four point functions of the order parameter operators in the POTS model. Uh, following on earlier works, I mean, Yassine described a fair bit about it, and it's, it's going to be covered also by, by Sylvain Ribot's talk uh, to some extent, I, I believe, and maybe other talks as well. So there was a conjecture here for the spectrum of exchange fields when you consider a four-point function and you take the points together two by two, uh, which turns out to be richer uh, than what was originally uh, supposed. Uh, and in particular, you get these cat's labels, which are, are, are fractions uh, that can have uh, arbitrary large, arbitrarily large uh, denominators. And building on that, uh, with Yifei, uh, we, we were able to study these four-point functions using the conformal bootstrap technique. But now uh, uh, there is this uh, aspect that Yassine discussed uh, about things not so Factoring, factorizing so well between Virasoro and Virasoro bar, that means that you now need to uh, operate a so-called interchiral conformal bootstrap. And I will bet my head that in 2025, uh, there will be a lot more to be said about this interchiral thing. I can actually see Bert 
thinking about it right now as I speak. Um, so uh, I thought I would save a little bit of time so that we don't get late. Uh, so 60 is a magical number. It appears everywhere in science and civilization. So here's the Buckminster Fullerene carbon 60. And Hubert, you know this language? Or no? <laughs> okay. so, well, that's Babylonian numbers, numerals. It strikes me that they have numerals from 1 up to 59, but there is nothing for 0 or 60. Well, anyway, clearly the, the base of that number system is 60. That's why we have 60 seconds in an hour. And, but the most magical thing, of course, is Hubert, who's uh, here. So he's also now 60. I can't believe this is going to happen. Uh, we all get so old, but still we are going strong. And so happy birthday, Hubert. Uh, thanks a lot for all these contributions. and. I look forward to 60 more years of collaboration. <laughs> and I hope I didn't misrepresent your ideas too grossly. So thank you, uh, Jesper, for a beautiful talk. Um, so I'll pass the microphone on in a moment, but I just wanted to <laughs> say, uh, so apparently uh, all the morning speakers give you some uh, job to do. So, so you have to revolutionize climate science and you have to learn Babylonian. So <laughs> let's see what comes in the remaining two days. Well, thank you, Jesper. It's really um, sobering to realize w we've done so little in so many years, I feel. I mean, I <laughs> Yeah, I, I wanted feel, to I make feel, that I point. I feel we're still trying to to solve the basic 2D loop model, which is kind of yeah sobering, like I said. But I think what you're convincing me of is that now it's time to move to real physics. I feel uh, maybe yes, maybe start talking to experimentalists and all that. But but okay, maybe I'll wait for 65. Maybe okay. anyway. <laughs> Thank you again, Jesper. And we should go back to the book. Huh? That's pretty clear. Okay. <laughs> Any other uh, questions or comments? Yeah, I have a question. How many unwritten books do you have, actually? Well, only two. I think only two. But they yeah, yeah. And there's the other side, which has been didn't describe so much: the physics, the impurities, transport. Oh, I actually, I, I, I plan to apologize <laughs> that I, I, I made an editorial choice, so to speak, yeah. to make this fit into 40 minutes, uh, everything that is out of equilibrium ha was not mentioned. So there were, this is a whole piece of activity that I, I didn't mention, in part because I feel uh, less competent to speak about it, but also because uh, I had to focus on something. Yeah, so no <coughs> problem. But I think that's two books. But really, I wanted to become... Uh,